Hey guys, it's Jackie again, and today's video is going to be all about my home interview with the seeing eye. So let's get started. Alright, so in today's video, I'm going to be describing the process of getting a home interview at the seeing eye and what the home interview entailed. So, in order to get a home interview, you have to submit an application and basically that application just asks basic questions about, do you know what your mobility is like, how your orientation skills are, um, what your environment is, and stuff like that. And then you submit some references as well, and once those references are in, they send you some medical documents saying, Sorry, again, if this is really wavy, um, or whatever. Again, I'm trying to film on my own. Uh, they send you some medical documents that you have to get filled out by a practitioner, as well as some documents about your vision uh, that you need to get filled out by an eye doctor. But since I can't really see anything, I didn't have to get any of those filled out. Um, I just had to... Um, send them some of my medical documents about my physical, um, saying that I was healthy and good to go to the eye. Um, so then they set up a home interview with you. And basically what that is, is they ask, they have an instructor go down to where you are working, to where you're living at the moment, and that happened to be UNC for me. And so, so, and so for UNC, that, that meant that the instructor had to go to North Carolina. So what they try and do, just so that they're not going for one person, they have an instructor go down when there are multiple people. So when it's about three or four in an, in an area, so that they're not just going down for one person. Um, so the person who came down to see me basically called me about a week in advance and set up a time to come down. It was around four o'clock when he said he was gonna get there. He got there a little early, which was fine by me. Um, I had nothing to do anyways, uh, because it was on a Tuesday or Thursday, I can't remember now. All I know is that I had an outfit class, and so that was my only class for Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and it's funny what you remember really about these things, because I can't remember the exact date. But I can remember that I was writing a paper uh, for my classics class, so that's that's kind of funny what you remember. But so, um, when he got to the school, um, he found my dorm and he called me, I went down, and basically he asked me to show him a route that I usually take, so I took him to one of the food establishments that was on campus, um, because that was probably the closest place to take him and I also did that because there was a street crossing involved and so because of that I thought it was good that I was able to show him that I can cross streets uh, safely and how exactly I cross those streets. So we went to that place with me using my cane and then um, we turned around and we went back to my dorm. However on the way back to my dorm we did what's called the Juno walk. And a Juno walk is basically where the instructor acts as the dog and you hold on to the harness and the leash as you would with a guide dog. And the instructor holds on to the other end of the harness and leash and, and pulls exactly the way that a guide dog would. And so the purpose of these Juno walks is, it is as far as my understanding goes, to gauge both how fast or slow a person walks and how much pull the person likes because some people do well with a lot of pull because the thing is is you have to keep your hand um, bent at like a 90 degree angle sort of and it has to be at your side by your hip literally stuck to your hip the whole time and so if your dog has too much pull and you don't like that like you're you let your hand go slack and 
and you let it straighten out, then that's not good. It means you like less pull. And that was the true, that, sorry. And that was true for me. I don't like a lot of pull. I can't do a lot of pull. It, it's just not me. And so basically what we did in that Juno walk was walk back to my dorm, but he, before we started, he told me some of the commands that I would be using with him. So one of them was forward. And so with that, you, um, you say Juno forward and you move your right, because the harness is on your left hand, right? So you move your right hand forward. Um, you like flick it forward as far as I remember. I, if I'm wrong, I will let you guys know once I get to the seeing eye. But as far as I can remember, you move your right hand and you say Juno forward. And so um, the dog, or the instructor in this case, moves forward and walks. So then when he gets to the street crossing, he stops, the dog will stop, you listen to the traffic as the dog handler, and then you say, once it's clear to go, you say, Juno forward, and he'll take you across the street. And I'm saying he because the person that I had was a he, so. Um, and then you, you, once you get to the place across the street, you have to give your dog slash instructor praise. Some instructors don't make you do it. My instructor, I think, had me do it once or twice just to uh, make sure that I knew what it was like to give praise. And so um, I think at the same time that you give praise, you're also supposed to pet, but that would be really weird. So we just gave praise and I just said, good boy, Juno, you know, and told him he was doing good. Um, and then you tell them, for me, I had to tell my instructor to go left. So I said, Juno left, and I flicked my hand to the left. And so it, so the, the instructor turned left. And then once I knew that we were getting close to my dorm, and so what the instructor actually did was tell me that we were getting close to the entrance because um, I wasn't used to it, right? So he told me, he said, okay, so tell him to find right. And so I said, Juno, right? But it, I, I can't remember the exact command, but it, it was something like find right. And so basically he would stop at the next opening and then I would tell him to go right. And so he then took me up to the doors. So that was the whole Juno part of the interview. Then we went inside where it was cooler um, because goodness, it was such a hot day. It was in September, but it was still very, very hot. Um, and my instructor told me that I did a very good job walking and that I was a very good candidate for a guide dog. Um, he basically told me that I was gonna get accepted, but he couldn't, you know, he, they, they can't tell you that for sure, but he said I had very good chances of getting accepted, which, as we know, I did get accepted. But, um, and then he also said that, he said that the campus was beautiful, and he kind of said that I did a very good job, uh, considering that I was wearing flip-flops, like, because a lot of blind people don't like wearing flip-flops because they could stub their toes, and I've done that before and stuff. But, sorry if you can't hear my brother in the background, I think he's on the phone. But so a lot of people have stubbed their toes when they wear flip-flops and so they choose not to. I like wearing a lot of sandals. I, that's just me. Um, so he said I did very well and he said that I did a good job at guiding the dog and at following the dog, which is very important because the dog is going to take you around obstacles. And so what happens is that if the dog moves left, it's gonna move laterally to the left. And with a cane, you're used to moving straight forward and hitting the obstacles with your cane and then moving around them. But with a dog, it just avoids them completely. And so it moves laterally to the left or laterally to the right and you need to be able to move along with it. And so he said I did pretty good at that. So then we sat down and we started talking a bit about 
if I had any questions. He told me what the process was going to be next. How they were, he was going to write up his um, case file for me and basically said that he approved of me going to the eye and then that they would get back to me. And he basically asked, you know, had I ever had a dog? And no, I have not. I've always wanted one, but we just haven't been able to. Then he asked, well, have, you know, this is what you're gonna have to do when you take care of a dog. There are veterinary costs, there are food costs. You know, he ta talked about all of that. Um, he asked what kind of environment I was in. So I told him, well, I'm on a college campus, of course, and I go home for the summers and stuff. And he asked me if I liked a lot of pull and what kind of dog I would prefer. So I told him I don't like a lot of pull. And by when he asked me what kind of dog I would prefer, this does not in any way guarantee that I'm going to get the specific dog type that I asked for, but the seeing I do take into consideration what kind of dog you prefer. So I said, well, honestly, I would prefer a female dog um, and a black lab because to my knowledge, labs shed less. And the seeing I actually um, breed labs to be smaller, which I think is very good for my purposes because we're traveling a lot on buses and um, obviously like sometimes you're in lecture halls and those little seats are kind of small, so I would just prefer a smaller dog. Also, I said that I really would not like a German Shepherd because I am a very short person <laughs> and I cannot imagine having a huge, huge, huge German Shepherd pulling me along. <laughs> I just don't think that that would go very well for me. Um, so finally we wrapped up the interview and before he left, my instructor had me practice a leash correction and that is basically where you just do a little pop on the leash. I completely forgot how to do leash corrections, but we're gonna go over that at the eye, or else I would describe them more. But you basically just do a little pop on the leash. It doesn't hurt the dog, but it just kinda tells him, hey, cool it. Like, leave whatever you're sniffing, focus, don't do what you're doing. Just focus. Um, and it just gets them back on track. It doesn't hurt them but he said that I needed to practice when I got to the eye, that I would need to practice my leash corrections and my commanding tone because I was very nice <laughs> and too gentle on the leash corrections. So then he left and he told me that if I had any questions, I could call him and I went back up to my room and I called everyone and their mothers and just told them, hey, I just had my interview and it went really well and stuff like that. And then I just waited and um, actually, so at the beginning of this video, I said that I had medical forms filled out by my practitioner. So no, I actually just submitted the eye care forms and then after the home interview, they had me submit the medical health forms. Um, but either way, I submitted medical health forms. Um, and then that was that for the interview portion. And then a few months later, I got accepted. Well, if you all enjoyed this video, um, which I really sincerely hope that you did because there are plenty more where that came from, my next video is gonna be talking about my concerns or thoughts before I go to the seeing eye about getting a dog, about just basically everything involved with going to the seeing eye. So be on the lookout for that. But if you did enjoy this video, please comment, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share it with your friends and family so that it can reach more people and more people can learn about the wonderful experience that I am about to embark on. So. Without further ado, I will see you guys on the next video, and yeah, I'm so excited, you guys. I can't believe that, you know, the interview was in September, and it's June, and counting today, I leave in two days. In two days, less than two days, because my flight leaves at 8 ish in the morning 
Um, so I, sorry if you hear the fire trucks that are passing by, but so I leave in a day and a bit, so I'm super excited. Alright, well that is that for this video, I will see you next time.